Amen. We stand together on that. You're going to just get all those employees in line, get all those jobs, the weather's going to cooperate. It does. Because we are standing in agreement. And that's right. I, I believe that this is going to be just a, an amazing week coming up. We've got elections coming up for our local elections. We're going to stand strong there. We're believing for positive, righteous results. Yes. And, and we are very excited about that because yes. it's, we're seeing the end at the beginning. And I think that's something that we just need to get used to. It helps with our faith, and that's, that's how God does it. So we want to do what God does. Whoops, I'm throwing things at you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's open in prayer. And let's start with Ephesians 1, 17 through 23. That God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is the saints in the saints. And what is the exceedingly greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body and the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful time of fellowshipping and just coming to glorify you, to learn more about you, to understand faith and healing and our salvation and our righteousness, everything you have already done for us, that we will receive this. Our hearts are just in good soil and that we will receive the seeds that are planted tonight. Lord, we thank you and we just put a special blessing over each and every person and their family in this church, Lord and the pastors, Lord, that we will lift them up, and we will always glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Well, you know, we've been talking, um, obviously, about healing, and it's always interesting to me to think about when, when, you, when you talk about healing, people either believe it or they don't believe it. It passed away with the early church, or it could be of the devil, or it could be something that's really foundational. Um, you know, what we're getting to is the truth of what, what the Bible says about it. And I always, when I talk to people about healing, they'll look at me and they'll think I'm sometimes grateful and that I'm talking about healing or praying over them, or other times they look at me like I'm absolutely crazy and I've lost my mind. And I always ask them, like, you know, how many, how many people did Jesus heal? All? Oh, all. Oh, yeah, 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 all. Did Jesus change? Did, is God different yesterday, today, or tomorrow? Is he, is he still the same? Is his promises the same? Did, did, did God ever make anybody in the New Testament sick? You know, I, I just, I, I always want to just ask a few questions to just look and have a little insight to what, how they've been taught. Because the church, Big C, has taught a lot of things that were incorrect. And sometimes trying to erase that and put in true biblical knowledge and truth, um, I, it's, it's hard for people to wrap their heads around things that they've learned. And they're like, oh, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. I'm not sure if I've ever found that verse yet. But I've looked for it. Just because somebody would say that, and I'm like, hmm, really? Where, where was that? So I, I just think that, you know, sometimes people feel like the whole, you know, well, you've sinned, so you're sick. God's put that on us. And I remember, you know, even with a lot of things that have happened in, in my lifetime, they're like, oh, well, God's putting a curse on the United States. And I'm like, I'm not sure if that's, 
you know, he's blessing us because we stood on his truth as a foundational truth in the beginning of our Constitution. Now, I'm not saying that we haven't started leaning away from it, but the strength of the Christians are still focused on the truth and the biblical foundations that we laid down at the very beginning. We're still a God-fearing country, and we will stay that way as long as there uh, is there, that there's a remnant left. Amen? Amen? Uh, so I, I just feel like that when we're, when we're thinking about all the things he's done for us, forgiveness is one of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, we do. And, you know, in his presence, if when we're asking for salvation, there's that forgiveness, and that forgiveness in that presence, there is healing. It's, it's all wrapped into one, all the things he has already done. And I find it interesting that the people, the Christians today, we're trying to get so many things done that Jesus has already done. So why are we doing the things he's already done when all we have to do is receive them? So we're not going to deal with sickness and sin. We're just going to get our healing. We're going we're gonna to keep our health. Keep your health and don't give in to that sickness to begin with. It's easier to stand up on that hill than it is to slide down that slippery slope. Then you're sick and now you got to crawl back out and get back to your health. Just keep your health. I mean, it sounds, it sounds pretty simple, but supernaturally, speak to that mountain right off. I mean, you got that pain? Get rid of it immediately. All right, so sickness and sin, here we go. It's always God's will to heal us. Amen. You know this because Jesus only did what he saw his father do. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. John five nineteen. God the son is the express image of God the father who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews 1.3. The Greek word translated express image speaks of an identical copy or a perfect representation. Therefore, God's word reveals that Jesus Christ is the identical copy, perfect repre representation of his father. He only spoke what he heard his father say, and he only did what he saw his father do. So we can be confident in determining God's will concerning healing by looking at the life of Jesus. Absolutely. Amen. That's great news. You know, the, the one thing, though, is we're also made in his image. And if we're made in his image, why aren't we doing what our father does? And why aren't we acting and speaking the same words? You know, if we're doing what the Father's doing, we watched, we saw Jesus do it. We can see, we can follow Jesus' words and actions and deeds. And he said, we're going to do greater things. So why aren't we doing that? You know, we should be in that every single day, keeping ourselves in that higher, you know, we're, we should be in those high places, you know, the stay in the spirit. And sometimes when you're getting down and out, or if you're feeling bad, or you can't get over that illness, because your, your feelings are starting to really sink in, speak the word. Because if you think about it, think about anything right now, and then say something. And if you say something, it kicks out that thought, and now you, you know, oh, I'm sick, I'm, I got a headache, oh, my toe hurts, my, my body hurts, and I'm like, Oh, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, what, what, what? Okay, I had to lose that thought because I spoke the word, and now it's going to come back. It will never return void. So now I'm going to refocus because I've actually spoke that word. So we have to really concentrate constantly just speaking that word over us because it should be the first place that we go to when we are sick. Find your scripture, stand on that word, and then move forward instead of, complaining. Perfect representation. 
There is not one example in the Gospels of Jesus ever putting sickness on anyone. The modern church that preaches God makes people sick is representing him completely contrary to the perfect representation of Christ. It's totally opposite of the exact image Jesus gave us of his father. Not one single time did Jesus ever make anyone sick. Not once did he ever refuse to heal someone. Now, there are a couple times when people refused to receive healing from him, but it wasn't because Jesus didn't want to minister to them. If they, if they wouldn't receive it, I'll deal with this more later. There isn't one single time that Jesus said, no, God wants you sick. He never laid hands on a person and gave him or her an infirmity or a disease. That's not the way Jesus represented God the Father. There are 17 times in the Gospels where Jesus healed all of the sick that were present. There are 47 other instances where Christ healed at least one or two people at a time. See this section, it, is it always God's will to heal? At the back of this book. But you cannot find even one instance where Jesus refused to heal a person or where he put sickness on someone. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10.38. God is not the author of sickness. He's the author of healing. Absolutely. And there, with the multitudes, he was probably healing more than one person at a time. He just had thousands of people. And he, he's always been a good God. Or people wouldn't have had, he wouldn't have had multitudes following him. And they, they, were, they weren't born again. They were all getting healed. So if, if this is the case, then we are born again. So we should, we should have it that much easier to be healed and see miracles all the time. But he was doing miracles left and right. And that little bit of action that we need to do is what's going to get those miracles done because we're just going to act in faith. That's it. He'll do the rest. It's his power, but we need to act in faith. Blessing or curse. Even under the Old Testament law, sickness, infirmity, and disease were never considered blessings. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, lists the blessings promised to those who would keep God's commandments. And verses 16 through 68, Describe the curses that would come upon those who didn't. Now, you need to understand that we are in the new covenant today. We don't have to keep all the Old Testament law in order to receive the blessings of God. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessing can come upon those by faith in him. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is any, everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians 3, 13 through 14. Therefore, in Christ we have access by faith to the blessings listed in Deuteronomy 28. And in Christ we have been redeemed and delivered from the curses listed in Deuteronomy 28. However, this chapter of the Bible still shows us what God considers to be blessings and cursings. Imagine a chalkboard with a line drawn down the middle, dividing it into two columns. At the top of the left column is the word blessings. At the top of the right column is the word curses. According to Deuteronomy 28, health would be listed on the left in the blessings column, and sickness would be listed on the right in the curses column. Yet many people in the church today reverse this, saying, oh no, it's really a blessing that God gave me this sickness. That's not true. And unfortunately, we all know people who believe that, or you'll see a, a Christian movie that depicts that this small child gets sick and dies, and the whole town comes out and gets saved because this child, you know, no. I mean, I just, I just, I don't like to see those kind of movies. It's just so wrong, and it's a deception. Even in a Christian form, it's like, it's like when he was in the garden. Did God say that? Was that what he meant? You know, all we got to do is just, he just twists that truth just enough that people easily, if you don't have knowledge, that it's wrong. And I, I, I feel that there's a lot of people who will watch a, a good, wholesome, quote-unquote, Christian movie 
that doesn't depict the truth. And I've seen a lot of them because I watch a lot of Christian movies. And when I look at them, I'm like, that's wrong. And then someone will start talking about it, you know, and then you got to correct them. And then they feel embarrassed. And, you know, it's sometimes it's a harsh or a difficult conversation for people. But we got to just continue to just push the truth and not let them slide on, on bad knowledge. Roadblocks. Can some good come out of people being sick? Certainly. It's just like the person who learned from the hard knocks of sin. While doing something terribly wrong, they realize, man, my life is totally out of balance. I'm a messed up person. I might even be demo demonized. Thank you. I need to turn to God. So they call on the name of the Lord in faith, receive salvation, and get delivered. I've actually talked with individuals who are in prison for murder and are on death's row. That's where they decide to turn to the Lord and become born again. Several inmates in this situation have heard my radio programs and written to me. God used what was happening in their lives to bring them to the end of themselves and cause them to become born again. Now their whole life has changed, and they are gloriously saved and serving God. I'm sure you can see that this would, could happen, but is it correct to say that the Lord caused them to commit that murder? No, it wasn't God. I can guarantee you that the Lord tried to put restraints on them and obstacles in their way. God tried to stop these two teenage boys from doing what they did at Co Columbine High School on April 20th, 1999. They killed 12 fellow students, a teacher, and then themselves, while wounding 23 others. One of those boys was in the youth Bible study the week before he did that. The minister conducting the Bible study received a word of knowledge from the Lord interpreted the interrupted the study and said someone here is either thinking about killing themselves or killing someone else he gave an invitation for a long period of time and pleaded for that person to respond but he didn't the very next week this boy and another went out and killed all of those people god was putting a roadblock in that young man's life he was dealing with him and trying to turn him from the course of action it wasn't god that led him to kill people and then kill himself, and send himself to hell. No, God tried to stop him. There are other individuals who had gone ahead and killed someone, then at the same some point forward afterwards, turned to the Lord in repentance and faith. The Lord can use even the things that the devil does in our lives, but that doesn't mean he caused them. In the same way, Satan has caused people to be sick, infirm, and diseased. Yet, when they get into these terrible situations, they cry out to God, turning wholeheartedly to him, and he answers their prayers. After being gloriously saved, individuals may learn that they were just self-centered people before. They didn't care about God or anyone else. They may learn important lessons through their infirmity, and because of that, mistakenly begin to credit God with giving them that sickness. God would no more give someone sickness to humble them than he would to cause them to murder someone to humble them. Oh, I maybe missed a page. Um, <laughs> every now and again that happens. Um, I just think that sometimes we need to really think about the people who have God has put in our paths and to, to listen. Because sometimes someone will be put there purposely and it might change the course of our lives. You know, he can, you know, we pray for laborers to come through, you know, for ourselves or our family. But often someone, you know, we might be looking at the wrong thing that we might start getting off on the wrong path. And even though if we're doing the right things, you know, God may want a different direction for us. And I think we just need to really listen to the Holy Spirit uh, because he does put a lot of laborers, and it's unfortunate that people don't see when they're not Christians because it could have saved them a lot of heartache, but their heart becomes very, very hardened. And, you know, when they're just thinking about themselves, you know, that hardened heart um, is is really a bad place to be because we can't hear the Holy Spirit. We can't hear from God. We don't want to see anything where it's all focused on us. Even if it's not being mean-spirited, 
when we have our hearts hardened in certain areas, God can't minister to us. So even if we're on a good path, it's one thing. But if we're on a bad path, and these people aren't Christians or they're, they're struggling, it's really, really difficult for them. And I, I think Columbine's a perfect example of these people going in and there were people there. And I know that in my own life I've seen people I've tried to tell them to turn the other direction, and they will not listen, and they just charge forward, and then the consequences hit, and they fall to pieces, and you're there to help pick up the pieces. But wouldn't it have been nice if they had a little 2020 vision and just didn't do it to begin with? Mm -hmm. Resist sickness. Healing is part of Christ's atonement just as much as forgiveness of sins. In the same way that I should resist sin, I should resist sickness. I shouldn't accept infirmity or disease just the same as I would, wouldn't say, well, God, I know that you could help me not to sin, but I don't know if you want me not to sin. Maybe it's your will for me to sin. Nobody would advocate <laughs> that type of an attitude, yet modern Christianity does exactly that when it comes to healing. God, we know that you can if it's your will. We ask you to heal us, and then they just leave it up there. If they get healed, then it must have been God's will. If they don't, then it must not have been. That's what's wrong with the person saying, God, if you don't want me to go out and commit adultery, then stop me. <laughs> and if they don't do it, they say, thank God, thank you, God, for stopping me. But even if they do it, then they say, it must have been God's will for me to commit adultery. We would never say that because adultery is sin. But they can see sickness as something that is optional. No, healing is paid for and available just as much as forgiveness of sin. Therefore, we ought to hate sickness and disease as much as we hate sin. As long as you can tolerate sickness and sin, you will. But once you reach the place of saying, I'm not living like this, I will not do it. I'll die before I go out and do this. You'll start seeing sin diminished in your life. Once you get the attitude that I will not put up with sickness, infirmity, and disease, I resist it in Jesus' name. You'll start seeing healing manifest in your life. Of course, there's more to it than just this. Among other things, there are laws that govern healing. There's much to learn about receiving healing from God, but this has to be your foundation. Healing is included in Christ's atonement. Sometimes you just got to go back to the basics. What's the foundation? Are you loved? Are, are, you, you know, are you forgiven? Are you righteous? Yes, yes, yes. You know, Sozo had, was the word that means, it's an all-encompassing word for salvation, but it's used as saved, um, healed, salvation, you know, and those are the things, I mean, like, even J.R.S. is, when it says, besought Jesus, greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death, I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed or sozoed, and she shall live. <clears throat> so it's also translated as made whole. So even like with the uh, woman of the issue of blood, she was made whole or sozo. So those are things that, that atonement, we just have to remember he's done it. And why don't we want to take it if he's already done it? I mean, if every time, if I sit there and tell you guys, okay, come on in and have a seat. They're sitting, but I'm like, come on in, have a seat. Sit down, go ahead, sit down, sit down. You're, after a while, you're like, is she crazy? I mean, does God, are we just asking the same thing? God, can we, can you do this? Can you do this? You're, you've already got it. You're already blessed, and you've already got it. So let's just take her chair, go boldly. That's the other thing, is are we going boldly to the throne? You know, when we're asking, are we just kind of, you know, he didn't like a beggar. You know, and faith pleases God. So, again, what is it about God's will that we don't understand? Our healing should be bold. It should be magnified and glorifying him. And it should be full, running rampant. Every church in America should be just closing hospitals. And that's, that's where we all need to be. God's will is clear. I'm seeing a tremendous amount of victory in the area of healing personally and in ministering to others. 
Unless you are having better results, you ought to consider these truths I'm sharing. This is a foundational truth that makes everything else work. Jesus bore our stripes on his body to heal our bodies, just as much as he died to forgive our sins. Without exception, all the people I've studied who have had the healing power of God manifest in their lives and ministries on a regular basis have had the same foundational belief. I'm not talking about someone who just every once in a while sees healing. Even an old blind squirrel will come up with a nut every once in a while. I'm talking about people who walk in divine health and consistently seeing miracles of healing. Every single one of them has believed that healing is part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe it's always God's will to heal just the same as it's always God's will to save. Until you get that attitude, Satan will always be able to make you passive. Remember, you have to resist, actually fighting against the devil before he'll flee from you. James 4, 7. You need to understand and believe that healing is from God and sickness is from Satan. Once you make this clear distinction in your heart, then you must resist the devil, all the sickness, infirmity, and disease he sends your way. You can't just passively say, Lord, if it's your will, heal me. You must be persuaded in your heart to the truth of God's word concerning healing and then actively stand against the devil. God's word is his will, and it's very clear. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 3 John 2. God wants you well. Get mad at the devil. Get mad at him. Draw that line in the sand. Tell him no. Push him back. Get him out. Bind him, whatever it takes. Get him out of your body. And you know, if that whole fasting and praying thing, you were fasting. You know, and the it's not to move God. It's to... Buffet our body so that we're, that when we speak the word, our body will listen. And fasting, if, if your body doesn't like fasting, because mine doesn't, uh, if your body doesn't like fasting, tell it, okay, I'm not going to do three days, I'm going to do ten. So you better listen up, body, and get in line with the word, or, oh, it's starting to scream, okay, it's going to be eleven days. So you better stop. And I, I, we need to get in charge, and I know that there's issues I've got some eating issues, and I just like to eat. I mean, I like certain things that aren't good for me. But why? Who am I listening to? I'm listening. I'm being very carnal. Oh, there's a candy bar sitting over there. I just really want that chocolate over there. You know, if I can't get my body under control, then am I getting my mouth under control? Am I getting my thoughts under control? Am I listening to what the Holy Spirit's saying? I mean, there's a, that's a little part keeping that my mouth closed and not throwing everything in it because I just I just want to taste it. You know, and if we need to start now, that's the whole thing. It's like we're strong and we're healthy and, and, and you know, if there's a headache or whatever it is, stop it now because devil throws something else at us. If we're not ready now and all of a sudden we're really sick, it's like a marathon runner. I'm not going to run out there and do 13 or 26 miles. <laughs> that's funny but anyway <laughs> uh, you know but if I was training for it I could do it I could <laughs> I could I really could but you know that's we have to train for this now we are running a marathon we're running the good race we're gonna we're gonna fight to the end and that's what we have to do every day is think about how we're gonna do it what God wants in our, in our body, make those, it's a strong temple for him. I want to be able to hear everything he tells me. I, you know, it's like, as I kind of revamp my life, I'm like, all right, my world's getting very, very busy again. Do I have time for it? Mm, it's got a little bit harder, a little bit, and it gets pushed out. I'm like, no, I, I need to push something else out. I need to reorganize and make sure there's time for God that I can listen and sit quietly. And we just, whatever your little issues are, start making those little corrections now. It's just like driving a boat. You don't want to just make a big U-turn. You just want to make those little course corrections and, and just kind of stay on that path. And it's not that hard to follow what he wants, to keep moving in the right direction, 
And it seems like, you know, and I don't want it to sound like a formula where it's like you got to have faith and not unbelief and you got to say this and you got to confess that. Just listen to what the Holy Spirit says and then rest. Know that you've got it. Believe it. Know it. Get it from here to here and then just rest in the fact that you've given it to him and now his mighty power is working right now. And we don't have to worry about it anymore. And it's done. Because God does want you well. Now, we do have a testimony uh, that we'd like to watch. You have that one? And I think she's, it's a very interesting testimony, and I kind of liked it. I've seen some other people that didn't, didn't survive so well. And she has a, a, a good... Good testimony from cancer, which just seems to be prevalent everywhere. And I think you know, something we can a little learn everything from the testimonies. My story starts in 2009 when I was diagnosed with cancer. It was a grown tumor near my cervix. They said, we don't want to take your uterus out. We want to use radiation and chemotherapy to kill the tumor. They will radiate me on the inside. I did not realize back then how severe the symptoms would be afterwards. Before hearing the truths of God wants you well and you've already got it, Cindy Mazes, a single mother from Holland, did everything she could to survive the diagnosis of cervical cancer. Although she would win the battle against the tumor itself, the side effects from months of radiation treatments and chemotherapy would be another war altogether. This is her healing journey. After the treatments, after the cancer, I didn't feel as the same person. My hair would fall. I started having food allergies. I start having hay fever. I knew healing was available, but I did not know that there were laws that govern healing. I was on the internet, on YouTube, and the Holy Spirit brought me to Andrew. Just an Andrew woman teaching, and it was, you already got it. It says you have to say to your mountain, and yet the average Christian will not say to their problem. They won't say, cancer, you're dead. Cancer, leave my body. Sickness, get out of my body. Instead, oh God, I'm asking you, I'm waiting on you. And I was hooked from that moment on. Spiritual authority, believer's authority, word became flesh. Uh, you've already got it. Every single one, I just listened, 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 listened. After she learned to speak with authorities, she told me to speak with authorities and how you have to do that. So she actually, we were both learning. I got healthier. I, got, I saw things change. As Cindy and her daughter learned their authority in Christ, symptoms began to leave. And in a matter of months, Cindy's health and strength were restored, evident in an interview she shared at an Andrew meeting in Holland, 2014. The way Andrew was, was teaching, it was like, I had no um, reason anymore to be sick, to have pain, to be fearful. But Cindy had no idea that the worst was yet to come. Years later, in the fall of 2016, Cindy was drafting a book about all she had learned throughout the healing process when the enemy gave her a blow so devastating that it shook the very foundation she was writing about. I was writing my book, and I felt like someone stabbed me in the back. I started speaking out, pain, you leave in the name of Jesus, stop. But it got worse, like rapidly. I felt pain go throughout my whole stomach and belly, but really fast. I fainted, I came back again, and I went to the hospital. There was not one scripture I could get into my mind. I was only thinking, I want this pain to stop. A cold just, just crawled up from my feet up to my legs. A voice, well, Holy Ghost, told me to sit next to her and to speak in tongues, so I did that. The coldness, it went away. And Holy Spirit told me, he said, you have to make a choice to live 
Otherwise, you will die. But you have to make a choice to live. Otherwise, I cannot do anything. So in myself, they didn't know anything, my children, that I was ready to give up. I was ready to quit. I was ready to just die. I made a choice to live. The doctor came. He said, in your intestines, there are holes. The radiation it melted parts of my body together. If you would have stayed in your bed this evening, you would have died. They made a different route for my intestines and still nothing worked. The pain was there morning, noon, night, during the night. She was different. You know, you could see how tired she was and how sometimes I saw that she wanted to give up. I had three doctors looking into my case. They also said to me, you're just such a difficult case. We don't know why the pain uh, doesn't leave. I was on morphine the whole time, medication of my medication, and it didn't work. I was uh, losing weight rapidly. I was 40 kilos. It didn't matter what I ate. Even when I drank a bit of water, I would just feel pain. The doctors, they came and they said, we're gonna let you go home because we cannot do anything for you anymore here. All of those months, I felt sorry for myself. I was really in my soulish realm. I knew I needed to get into the teachings that at first helped me regain strength, helped me to see things clearly. You locked yourself up in a room to pray, to fast, and just so no one really would be around her, so she could just focus on you know, healing. I started fasting because I knew my body had to respond to my words again. My body needed to know that when I speak, it needs to obey me. I made a list of every single teaching Andrew did that touched me and it would play from morning and even throughout the whole night. And every single scripture about healing, I would write it down there are some of you that are believing God for healing, but you aren't acting healed. You resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You resist sickness and that sickness will flee from you. But start doing something. Do what you can do. If you can't do it all, do part of it. The Lord will meet you where your faith is, but faith without works is dead. I think it was up to eight things I was taking in. I stopped it all, cold turkey. I knew that it was going to be a hard time, but I knew that was my only hope, getting into the Word, getting into the teachings again. I was just building myself up. I was speaking in tongues a lot, just speaking in tongues. And at first I couldn't speak because the pain was still there. The, the pain of the operation was there. I couldn't walk properly. My older son had to carry me down the stairs, put me on the couch, I went down a whole list of healing journeys. I just watched it over and over. They all had elements that spoke to me. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't rest myself. I couldn't get myself out of bed. Nikki Oshinsky. Andrew prayed for her. He implanted a holy indignation. It resonated. Like you really need to get angry with your situation. Mike Hesh, he was a bit similar like me. He knew the word but still he had a double-mindedness. He drew a line in the sand. I knew I had to act upon my faith. I knew I had to stop relying on everyone around me. So instead of my older son carrying me, I myself got up and went down the stairs. It took me like an hour to get down. I started cooking. I put a chair into uh, the kitchen. And the first times that I started doing that, even washing dishes, I just fall asleep because I was so tired. And then the next day, it was like half an hour. And so it just increased until I could grab the staircase and walk down. The pain was there, but I just treated it as if it was a lie. Julianne Hartman, the way she walked her hallway and the dogs there, and then she would just speak to her body, speak to this, speak to that, and she got out of it. I started to use the scriptures that I found in the Word and that I heard from the teachings of Andrew. And I started to walk in my living room, just speaking them, blessing myself with them. 
It took me four and a half hours to do that, but I did it. I could do more and more in the house and then also outside the house. I could take my dog for a walk first outside, just on this side, and then I could cross the street and I could take more and more steps. All of a sudden, one day I was sitting on the couch. I started praising the Lord and all of a sudden he asked me this question. He said, where's the pain? And it literally just blew my mind because the pain was gone and I did not know when it had left. I could do anything and everything around the house and inside the house and outside. I am close, I am healed, so eyes you must see in Jesus' name. And then, whoop, it opens again. But it's happened a couple of times. I was beginning on my book again, and while I was typing, that same horrible pain, at one time, I just felt it come like, boom. My daughter came in, and she looked at me, she said, you're in pain again. I was mad. I just started saying things and saying things and saying the pain to go away. Whatever came upon me, lifted. I said, oh, I can breathe again. I said, it worked. It's all gone. But the enemy was not done. Just a few weeks later, Cindy had one last showdown, a battle where she alone would have to use her authority in Christ. I wanted to sleep, and then the pain was again like it came like, whoa, every single symptom. That pain came so severely, I heard a voice, and it was an audible voice, and it said, your daughter is not here now, so what are you going to do? This time, you will not make it. And it was like, I looked to someone, but there was no one there. I just heard an audible voice. I was lying on this side, looking, and I said, no. I will live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord. I said, it's so stern. And he said, pain, you leave right now in Jesus' name. Be gone. It just left. And it never, ever came back. Pain, and I'm over this age, and so I've got to have this, and you got to have that. That's not true. Moses was 120 years old, and his natural force was not abated, nor his eyesight dim. It's not just acting upon the word, listening to teachings when you're in a crisis, but it's throughout your whole life. So there's not a day that goes by that I don't meditate upon the word or that I don't listen to teachings. So I use my words wisely now. I change my words and I change them into the words of the Lord. I can just walk the dog and I'm, I'm speaking. Body, you are in health all the days of my life. You are even healthier than you were before. Every time I eat this food, it just is nourishment for me. And I can digest it normally. Over yourself, over your children, over the men on your head, babe, but you said, your word, send us a Today, Cindy lives her life completely healed and is busier than ever preaching at youth groups, writing books, and even pastoring a church. What the enemy used in an attempt to destroy her life has only made her stronger in her faith. Really, all the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, thank you so much, because I'm alive and well, preaching, teaching the word, praying for others and see, seeing them get healed, and actually, you enabled me to do that because Everything was for free. And Cindy is just one example of the lives transformed thanks to the free teachings made available by our friends and partners. As for her dog, the two of them still take afternoon walks together in remembrance of all God has done. So what did you say I think about this testimony? You know, that's, um, my mother um, had this 
very similar, you know, cancer, and and then it uh, years later it came back very harsh because of all the radiation and things that she had done. She had cervical cancer, and it was it was really bad. And because of the doctors, she started doing it from a, a different perspective. And the doctors talked her into something others, and it then they just started taking parts out of her. I mean, literally. I and I'm not saying anything really against doctors because I think there's some good ones. There's also some that are not good. And it was a, a lot of a lot of praying over there and I we just thought, you know, at the time, it was a long time ago, so didn't have near the training, but you know, we were just praying. I just had so much faith, but so many things and so many people were speaking so many things over her that I couldn't keep out because I wasn't there 24 sevens. Um, it was difficult because I, I look at this and go, my mom could still be here today. If she'd had more of these teachings in her hands, you know, 25 years ago. And Andrew was out there, it's just wasn't out there as much as he is today. And even today, there's a lot of people who just don't know about this. So I, I think, I think we just have to really push out there what healing was really all about, and and show them. I mean, we should be doing miracles every day. Um, there was a, a a coworker who came by me one day, and um, my kids were supposed to go to their class, and he's like, I, I gotta go. My my dad's really sick, and he just went in the hospital, and and it was just overwhelming. And she's a believer. You know, I work at a Christian school, and she's believes like we do. So. Literally, I just grabbed her hands and just said, he will not die, but do the works of the Lord, and started speaking in tongues, and she started speaking in tongues, and we're just like in the hallway just, I mean, praying, and it was like, no, this is not going to happen. Your dad's going to be fine. He's going to get out of the hospital, and and so she went and saw him, and and then the next day I saw her, and I said, uh, so, you know, how's he doing? Well, he's doing better. You know, they've kind of stabled him. It's good. You know, oxygen's low, but... Um, he's getting stronger every day, and I'm, praise the Lord. I said, how's your mom? And she said, you know, she's really sad. I said, why is she sad? Because her Bible study, preaching on, they're teaching on healing, told her, it's like a once, a once a month kind of thing. She didn't want her to come because she'd been around somebody who was sick. And they didn't want it to spread to the, to the group. And they said, please don't come and had called the father who was in the hospital and said, please tell your wife not to come. You know, and I, it just completely, like, my brains just went, Mwah! oh my goodness, my brain was just on fire at that point going, what? And they're, they're preaching about healing? I said, my church, we're preaching about healing. Every week I said, you want me to come to your house? Do you want me to come to your house? And she goes, would you? And I said, absolutely. I got three books. I said, we started, we went there, and I said, I'll do Bible study. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of your mom. And we were, you know, and her mom, we were praying and, and you know, just, and I know that she, I probably didn't tell her anything she didn't already know, but it just, you know, you, you get that spirit stirred up, and, you know, she went back, and she was praying over her husband, and, and he's strong, and then all of a sudden, he's home. Praise God. He's home. He's doing his breathing treatments. He's getting stronger every day. He's a fighter. He's fine. He is healed. and. You know, it's just, sometimes we just, we forget that there are people out there that just don't believe like we do. So we are very, very fortunate, praise God, that we have people that will pray with us and over us and we can just turn and say, hey, I need help. Okay, let's just pray, you know. So do any of you guys have any little testimonies for the week? Ah, pass that right down there, please, to Miss Donna. Okay. Yes, it's on. Okay. Last month, I was able to pay off my house, so I don't have to owe anything on that at the moment now. Nice. That's a blessing from God. The Amen. other one is Sunday, my grandson had a volleyball tournament, so I decided to go. That morning, Pastor had talked about tithing, and I agreed. I'm thankful that I'm a tither, and I'm glad I did. When 
the boys were practicing. They were on both sides of the courts, and I was in the front row, and my phone beeped. So I thought, okay, maybe I need to check this. Someone might be coming. And as I did, the ball came and smacked me in the face. Ooh. That it broke my glasses in three different places, and the arm of it pinched my skin, and I don't know how it got caught on my skin. So everybody was worried, and Danielle told me not to move, which I didn't. It took a couple minutes to get it off, and everybody was afraid I was going to have a black and blue eye. I said, nope, I'm fine. And they kept saying, you need to put ice and stuff on that. I said, I'm fine. I said, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And they kept saying I was going to have a black and blue eye the next day. And I said, nope, I will not have a black and blue eye because God is my protector. Yes, ma'am. And Amen. I had the ice on for two minutes. And then another boy got hurt, so I gave Danielle the ice, and I said, go take this to him. So she did. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had hurt his ankle, but no black and blue eye. So You're Danielle s- drove me home, and I had a spare pair of glasses, which I'm thankful for. So Your skin is beautiful. There's no discoloration. There's just two little cuts, one here and one up on my nose. And that's all it was, but it was a hard hit, and it almost knocked me over. So, Well... Keep those, go back and get a different frame, put those lenses back in, and you can... Yeah, it, they might even cover by insurance if you have part of your glasses. Sometimes you just got to ask, got to ask the right questions. Then God's going to provide for you either way. <laughs> Woo! That's awesome. Well, it's always good to be a tither. Yes. I've been confessing, you know, the blessing over my life and favor, and today there were three of them that happened um, financially, and Donna blessed me with a book, and so I'm a good book. All right. That is awesome. <laughs> about the rest of you guys? I know there's been blessings flowing. <laughs> I know I have to give this to you. When, when I was reading this this morning, and I know you all read this, or if you don't, it's a good idea. But dig into the covenant. This was um, March 30th, Dave. And this really struck me more than before. I don't know why. And it said, when God made covenant with him, this is Kenneth Copeland, Abraham knew there was no longer any, any, got it, room for doubt. Mm-hmm. When he made that covenant, there was no more room for doubt. And, and I'm looking at that, and I'm going, God had proven how intensely, how just how much he loved him. I can't express it enough. His desire to be God to him. He'd given him everything he had and bound himself to Abraham in a relationship that could not be dissolved. Abraham compre- comprehended I mean, you look at the covenant. It's it's like when we got married. I just knew there was no way out. I uh, and I was, what did I do? What did I do? Oh my God! Said <laughs> 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 well, that like it was a bad to thing. get married. I I I wasn't going to get married. Remember that. And but when you know there's no way out, you're going to make it work. Mm-hmm. So when this hit me today. And there was no longer any room, room, room for doubt. Because they had made covenants in Abraham's days, mm-hmm. as God made with Adam. And knowing that that covenant has never been broken, because they exchange gifts, they exchange, you know, drinking the other one's blood. And so we have got that covenant. Amen. We, can't, we can't lose Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's looking like no matter what, if you watch your words and you just pray in the Spirit and let the Holy Spirit take you and lead and guide you, then you don't work. There's, there's no effort there. Yeah. But you just trust him. And it goes so smooth. And, you know, grace, when it says he will give you grace, that means he will take you through it. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a little idea. The grace, when we went down to Kyle's, when he was mm-hmm. was having this situation, not being anxious, 
when we got there not being anxious as we watched what they were doing, never anxious. That was grace upon that situation. So whenever you're going through something, God will give you his grace. But if his grace isn't on you, you'll be wrestling with it. Mm -hmm. And so I was studying more on that today and, and getting a, a real open, uh, my eyes are open about the blood covenant and how when I made that covenant with Kenny, the two became one. Everything he had belonged to me, everything I had belonged to him, but you look at God. Everything that belonged to God belonged to me, and that's what Abraham was saying. He couldn't fail. We can't fail, you guys. That's right. We can't fail because with that covenant, we, we just, you know, when Jesus walked back to the throne of God, he stepped into the, the cloud of glory. He was the glory. Just think we got that all already. But how many times don't we struggle with things? You know, yes. I remember Kenny Jr. with a hearing aid and trying to get him in classes. And I thought, boy, if I'd have known then what I know now, you don't have to struggle. You can just have a party when it looks the worst. Yes. But that, that covenant just, it struck me so hard and so good. It was good. Mm hmm Anyone else? Well, why don't we go ahead and put our tithing in? Because, like Donna said, having tithing rights can save you so many times for so many things. And I know that I've claimed tithers' rights a few times myself. Thank you. Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you that we can come to your storehouse and bring our tithes and offerings. And Father, the seed that we're sowing, we know that there will follow a harvest. Just like when the farmer puts the seed in the ground, he expects the harvest. We are doing the same thing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And then... me, And they were asking me a little bit more about tithing and offering. And, and I said, you know, what does God do? Look in Malachi. What does God do when you pay the tithe? I don't know. I said, he rebukes the devourer. And they're like, okay. I said, but do you realize how many times the devil tried to kill you and your children? You know what I mean? And he can't do it because God rebukes the devourer for our sake. Amen. Isn't that awesome when you think about it? He's fighting for us. How can we lose? He, know, he knows everything that's coming at us. Oh, I just. It is. I, I'll just, when you came in, I and Dee were talking, we were talking about the weather. Um, the last couple weeks has really been tough on our business. We, we can't get nothing done. <laughs> so we need some dry weather, and, and then, um, you know, one day we got 50 degrees, next day we got 20, and it's raining and snowing. So right now, God is testing my business mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now with, the, with this weather. You know, I look at every day, I see the expenses, the overhead. Oh, it goes, keeps going, it keeps going. But I need to make sure I stand on the word that I know there's a mountain out there. I have to speak to that mountain. And I know because I'm a tither, I will reap the rewards of it. So um, you need to stand, stay and stand strong through those times. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the pit, you're still going to be praising. But it's the, it's the devil that's testing, mm -hmm. tempting, and trying us. That's and right. why? Because he wants to steal. And I know you meant to say that. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll, he'll just, he, he's so bold. And he'll come and just show you everything that's going wrong. And you go, I rebuke you. You stop it. It's, 
like on the testimony that, that Gail, stop pain. She got upset. Gave me a little bit of a chill, I'm not going to lie, when she heard that audible voice. Because there's been times where I think I've heard an, an audible voice that was not so great either. And, you know, so just standing your ground, amen, and rebuking that devil. He has no, there's no license to be on my land, my property, on me. He has nothing. He's just a deceiver. He's just looking to see Amen. who's going to open that Amen. door. Amen. And I'm not opening that door. I'm going to tell him to get out and stay out. You know, I was telling them in the prayer room, too, Monday night we were at the town hall meeting, and when I sat there, I, I felt like I was watching a video that I had, uh, that I was in already and that I saw already. And in the back of my mind, words kept on coming to me. Hmm. And I was like, I can't wait to see this play out. Then, tonight in the prayer room, he said something to me, and I walked over to the window, and it was like I left and I came back. Hmm. He showed me something. So when you take and put pieces of the puzzle together, because you pray in the Spirit, you give it to the Lord, and the, the Holy Spirit will help you. to. He will discern, help you with that discerning, so you can discern. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you want to push it out there, and you don't belong out there. You know, because the devil, he'll beat you up. And then you crawl back like the little bulldog. But when you hear those words, when you feel like you left and come back, that is, wow. He's taking us to another level. Yes, I know he, he is. is. Yes, he is. Well, let's go ahead and take communion. I think it's a, something we should do every day, even when we're not here. You know, just a little bit of uh, bread or cracker and whatever you have. You know, I think celebrating what the Lord has done for us every day is something that's very critical in our healing as well as just everyday life. Because that covenant, like you said, is still in place, but now it's a new, stronger covenant with him staying on the cross. And and I, I, you know, as Jesus was being whipped and brutally beaten, you know, at the whipping post, I don't believe his hands were necessarily tied. I think he was there just because of his love for us. Just for his love. That's what kept him there. Whip after whip after whip to the point of non-recognition of his face, his body, and because it was broken for me, I am healed. Praise God. Let's eat this. Just remember what he did. Don't let it go to waste. I don't want anything to go to waste. All the blood he spilt for me, I just want to be covered in his blood so I know that I have everything he died for. You know, every time I hear, when I think about it, it's like, I want it all, God. Help me walk through it. Give me that wisdom. Whatever it takes for me to get through, for me to receive all the stuff that you've done for me. I want it all. Every time I give something to my child and they leave it behind or they don't take it or they miss something, I'm like, oh, but you forgot this. And he's doing the same to me. I, I want to say, I got it all. Thank you. I'll just receive it. Let's just take this and receive it. In Jesus' name. Well, I just pray for every one of you guys to be blessed the rest of this week, to just be a strong and finish strong, that God is just going to just be throwing blessings at you, that the prosperity is flowing, that your glasses are fixed, that weather maintains gets you out there, gets all that stuff, that we are just marching forward, and as the people start to come in, we're going to just have testimony after testimony of all the things that are happening Amen. for us. All right? Amen. We will see you next week, Chapter 6, and you guys have a good week. All right? Love y'all. Bye.